the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You're the wonderful counselor, you're the mighty God, the Prince of Peace.
to the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You're the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You're the wonderful counselor. You're the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Christ Jesus. You're the wonderful counselor. You're the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You're the wonderful counselor. You're the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Oh, you're the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You're the wonderful counselor, you're the mighty God, the Prince the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him.
sing it like this sing Jesus Jesus I adore you Jesus Jesus I sing your praise Oh Jesus Father, we praise you. 
Lord, we praise you. Father, we praise you. We bow before you now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we bow before your presence now. Holy Spirit, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh, God, we bow before your presence now. Lord Jesus, we praise you. Lord Jesus, we praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we bow before your presence now. <laughs> Woohoo! Father, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we bow before your presence now. Holy Spirit, take control. 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 Father, like a, like a rushing mighty wind, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name, come fill the hearts of people now. Oh, Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. Come like a rushing mighty wind, oh God. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. Come take control, oh God. Come take control, oh God. Come take control. Come take control, oh Lord. Come take control. Holy Spirit, now we pray in Jesus' name. Come take control of this place. Come take control by your grace. In Jesus' name. the wonderful glorious God our Savior the wonderful glorious Christ our King you're the wonderful glorious God our Savior you're the wonderful glorious Christ our King you are the wonderful glorious God our Savior Father, you Jesus are the name. wonderful glorious Father, let Christ your glory our fill this place. Father let your glory fill every part of our lives so God we pray in Jesus name Father we cry out to you Father for the moving of your spirit Father we cry out for the great outpouring of your presence of your glory now let your presence fill this place of oh God in Jesus name for the great outpouring of oh God for the great outpouring of oh Lord for your great outpouring of oh God for the great outpouring of oh Lord for your great Fill me now, 
baptize me, baptize me, baptize me with your presence, oh God, oh Lord, come flow, come fill, oh Lord, oh God, come flow, come fill. Oh God. oh God, oh Lord, come blow, come fill, and let your glory fill this place. Let your glory overwhelm me now. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory overwhelm me now. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory overwhelm me now. Come fill, come fill, come fill and sanctify. Oh, come fill, come fill, come fill and baptize. Come fill, come fill, come fill and sanctify. Oh, come fill, come fill, come fill, Lord, baptize. Come fill, come fill, come fill and sanctify. Come fill, come fill, come fill, Lord, and baptize. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Be glorified. Lord Jesus, be glorified. Lord Jesus, be glorified. Lord Jesus, be glorified in our lives. Lord Jesus, be glorified. Lord Jesus, be magnified. Let a generation that has never seen before come to know your glory, Lord. Let a generation who's never seen before come, oh God, to understand you, Lord. Lord Jesus, be glorified Lord Jesus be magnified Lord Jesus be glorified Lord Jesus be magnified in me let your glory view my life say it let your glory view my life so that out of me flows these rivers of your glory so that out of me flow these rivers of your glory Come testify, Holy Spirit, come testify. Do that with me. Come testify, Holy Spirit, come testify of the glory, of the glory of the Son, of the Son, Jesus, of the glory of Jesus. Of Jesus, oh God, of the glory of Jesus. Father, we praise you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Father, we magnify your holy name. Be magnified, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, be magnified in me. Lord, be magnified in me. Just say it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to sing this with me, just real simple. Lord, I'm consecrated. Say, Lord, I'm consecrated to you. Say that with me. Say, I'm consecrated to you, Lord. I'm called out by you and separated unto you. I'm consecrated to you. Say that with me. I'm consecrated. To you, fill me up, oh God, overflowing with your glory now. Say that with me. Say, fill me up, overflowing with your glory now. Fill me up, overflowing with your glory now. Separated to you, God. Separated for you, Lord, to live, to live only for you, to live, to live now only for you. Separated, sing to fight for you. A separated, sing to fight for you. Set apart, set apart to live my life with you, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Set apart to live my life. Set apart to live my life with you, Lord. I'm set apart to live my life for you, Lord. Only for you. Only for you, Lord. Living with you, living with you, Lord. Only for you, Lord. I'm living for you, Lord. Only for you, Lord. Living for you, Lord. Only for you, Lord. I'm living with you, Lord. Only for you, Lord. I'm living with you, Lord. Only for you, Lord. I'm living with you, Lord. Consecrated, separated. A consecrated, separated. For you, come on, come on. I'm consecrated, come on, separated for you, oh God. I'm 
living for you. I'm living for you, oh God. Come on. I'm living for you, oh Lord. I'm living for you. A consecrated separate for you, Lord. I'm living for you, oh God. I'm living for you, Lord. separated who were willing to be taught his ways and live in the glorious realm of his life his life forevermore people think they can find life in the things of this world that belong to the powers of darkness the realms of darkness and the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life there's no life there there's death and it keeps the flow from taking place it keeps from the, the glory from being expressed so Father, in His great love and kindness and tender mercy, made a way so that you and I could be separated from all that mess. He made a way where you and I could be called out of darkness and live in the marvelous light, but very few people are interested. And then it takes the rest most of their life to be willing to go all the way. The reality of it is, his father's not going to compromise. He's not going to make any shortcuts. You know, I have people ask me all the time. They say to me, they say, uh, look, tell us, how did it all work out for you? I mean, how did, how did, what did you do? What did you do that things turned out with the way they did with your kids? And you need to fix this mic. That's why it's hanging down like this so you can fix it. But at any rate, how, how did, why did things turn out like they did for you? How did you get blessed? And really, the, most of the times, what I want to just tell folks is, you don't want to know. You really, you can, you can be seated. Huh. You can just be seated just for a little bit. I'm living for you, Lord. I'm living for you, Lord. Separated, consecrated to you, oh God. I'm living for you. Here's how I did it. I didn't compromise. I didn't compromise with anything, anyone. No compromise. I didn't compromise with my wife. I didn't compromise with religion. I didn't compromise with nothing. I, I dedicated myself to come in in agreement with what God has to say in His Word. So, to read, to, just, to be, just to be thought of with respect that Father would so love us that he would send his only begotten son as a gift, a present for us. 
if he was sent to us as a gift and a present for us to just live with us. A place where we could, he'd be here, we could go visit him. That'd be an amazing gift. If he would just come, be here, live out, been living for 2,000 years, you know, in the natural. Amazing gift. So we could go and see what it's like for somebody who really lives. What does it look like to really live? What does it look like to be full of life? What does it look like to truly walk in everything that every human being on the planet desires, but nobody knows how to get there? Every single person, I don't care there. Really, they want to be that complete. They want to be that whole. And they try to find it in money. They try to find it in fame. They try to find it in all these various different things. And it can't be found. Because in their mind, they created their own way. They said, oh, if I do this, if I have these things, then I'll be everything I want to be. I'll have it all. I'll be, uh, I'll be fulfilled. I'll have life. I'll be that person that I'm dreaming of but can't put it into words. The reality of it is that, the reality of it is that they get there. And, no, they're just as empty as they ever were. They just, they're just as lost as they ever were. Lost. You know, it's a terrible feeling to be lost. Have you ever been lost? It's a terrible feeling to be lost. I was lost one time, didn't know it. And it was only when I looked back that I knew it. I was up in the mountains of, of New Mexico. I was hunting. And I was oh, on the trail of these big bucks that I totally lost track of where I was at. Suddenly I realized, uh-oh, I've been lost for two hours. And I didn't even know it because I was so focused. There's a lot of people that are just lost and they don't even know it. Suddenly they come to a moment of realization. Suddenly they awake. Suddenly they come to their senses. Suddenly what they are chasing isn't bigger, you know, than everything else that's around them. Huh? I pray that that day and that moment happens for you right now, today. And suddenly you realize, if you don't know him, if you've, never, if you've never really truly turned your life over to him, where you've come to, come to realize the beauty of what it means to sit in his presence, the honor that he's bestowed upon us that we could be consecrated and separated unto himself. In other words, that we live in his realm and we get to, we get to stay where he's at because he's never going to go out from the place where he dwells. And so, my, my, I, I, one of the things for me is that, you know, as the more time you spend with the Lord, that if you even, if you just even begin to allow thoughts to go on that, that of course, you know, you get real sensitive to it as you walk with the Lord on, on, on the media, television and other media, there constantly, there's constantly demonic suggestions. There's constant demonic suggestions. And if you, if you don't, if you, you know, if you're just in the world, you don't even recognize it. You know, if you're just consumed with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, you don't even recognize it. You're just cursed. You don't even know it. You're constantly being influenced. In other words, what I mean by curse, you're constantly being influenced by demon spirits who hunt men's soul with sins, with, with sin to destroy them and you don't even know it. That's what I mean by the curse. Constantly. But when you stay in his presence, all of a sudden, then you begin, to, those suggestions hit you and you go, your, your mind goes there for a moment and then all of a sudden you're, oh God, Father, I just thank you so much that I'm consecrated to live for you. You're just overwhelmed with the privilege of being on his side, of being with him, of being in his family. Hallelujah. <laughs> I had some, I had a couple of different people you know, not too, in, it recently say to me, man, I really want to be a part of your family. And it's like I said, well, you can't. There's no way, I mean. There, there's no provision for you to be a part of my family in that sense. But God has opened at the door for us to be bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. I mean, if you just, if I could just get God's people to come hang out with him. I'm telling you right now, every bit of sorrow and every bit of sadness and every bit of trouble that goes on in your life is you pursuing something that you think you want. And it has nothing to do with reality. It has nothing to do with what you need. It's pursuing things that have nothing, it will not communicate the life in the presence of Jesus to you. Oh, mighty God. To be consecrated sanctified set apart it takes most folks a lifetime to recognize that we even get to do this 
or what that even means. Because it's all concepts, it's all ideas, it's all religious, you know, I, you know, things, as it were, that you read about in the Bible and you're like, wait a minute, what does this mean? I've got to be consecrated, I've got to be sanctified. And then people come along, theologian comes along and tells you this long list of stuff and you go, what? No, here's what it means. It simply means to be privileged to come sit down in the presence of the Lord and to stay there. It's just a privilege to come be a part of his family. And the, the mutual, one of the most beautiful things that, that God has done for us in his grace and his mercy because it takes us so long to get it is he provided a means for which that we can continually be forgiven if we really want to be different, if we really want to change. Somebody said to me, hey, you know, do you have to take care of people along the way? Yeah, we're taking care of lots of people along the way. But that doesn't mean we're going to lower the bar. That doesn't mean that we're going to change the call of the Lord Jesus Christ where we're taking people, care of people who just don't get it yet. They haven't been there yet. They haven't really stayed there yet. They don't really know what it is I'm even talking about. Or they've just brushed up against them, you know. Oh, but I'm telling you, as it doesn't matter who you are. I, I was reading this morning about Zacchaeus. This is in the, Zacchaeus is an interesting character. He starts the first day of the last seven days of Jesus' ministry on earth. And if you, I, well, I usually have one up there. Somebody's grabbed it. But I have a sequential events, chronological description of, of the life and ministry of Jesus. And I show you, prove to you how that we know it's the seventh day. The, la, the, la, the first of the last seven days of Jesus' ministry. But Jesus is passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem because he's going to go die now for us. Because, see, the Lord didn't just give him as a gift so that we could see the beauty and, and the splendor of, of what it means to live in him. He, he, gave, he gave us Christ Jesus so that you and I could ultimately come into oneness with him. We could come to know him because he was going to die for our sins at Calvary. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's on his way to go die for us. He's on his way to go bear in his own body our sins on the tree so that we can have fellowship with him. Tonight I'm going to be doing that. Tonight I'm going to um, I'm going to be allowing, you know, us to get together and partake. This is worse than this one. I'm gonna, we're going to get together and have communion. We're going to partake of the elements of the, of, the, of the blood and of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he poured out for us at Calvary. Can you turn this down? Could you fix, take the rumble out of it? Bless you. I mean, I know it's, um, sound systems are a very difficult thing to deal with. But Jesus on, is on his way. He's on his way to go to lay down his life for us. And I mean, I, I want to talk about that gift this morning, but I got I to talk the way that, the Lord's talk, telling me to talk, so you just have to keep up. He's on his way to go do this. He's passing through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem to go lay down his life for us. And Zacchaeus is a rich man. He's a, he's a, he's a man of great wealth. He's a, he's a man of, of great power and authority in his community at Jericho. And he just wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. And listen, when you've got that kind of wealth and when you've got that kind of power... Gonna, it's going to have to be someone special for you want to get a glimpse of them. You know, I'm just, wanna, just, trying to, just trying to relate just a little bit about what a gift it would be if God just sent Jesus to come live among us and we could behold someone who really knows how to live. We could behold someone who gets to live continually in the presence of God and who has nothing to do with sin. He won't have anything to do with it. He, he's so, totally separated from sin. He's totally separated from sinners. He's totally separated from every act of wickedness, from every realm of darkness. And he shows us what it really means to live. He shows us the beauty and the splendor of what it really means to have this life that God shaped us and formed us to have when he, when he shaped us and formed us in his image. Zacchaeus climbs up into the tree, which is just a, a, a ridiculous thing for a grown man to do. He was a short stature and he couldn't see above the crowd, you know. So Jesus knew Jesus was passing by, so he got himself a spot. You know, this is something for all the folks that have been um, impacted by his life and know his authority as 
the, the man that he was and the influence that he had to see this guy hanging from a branch in a tree so he can take a look at Jesus. Anybody that's like that, what happens is, you know, there's a, a crowd of folks around Jesus. Everybody's come out to see him, but nobody captured his attention. Uh, the, 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 the righteous folks, as it were, they thought they, they were righteous. The religious folks, they came out. The, 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 all the various different folks of the town of every different types of class and influence came out, but nobody captured Jesus' attention except for Zacchaeus. And why, did, why, did, why did Zacchaeus uh, capture Jesus' attention? Because Zacchaeus really wanted to see Jesus. He didn't, he didn't just want to be caught up in the emotion of a, of a new movement and see, you know, just catch a glimpse of this, you know, this famous guy who's just raised somebody from the dead. Because when he raised Lazarus from the dead, you know, that was right at about three months before his crucifixion. And, uh, of course, that spread, boy, that spread quickly. And, of course... When, when, you know, it was, it was more of a tremendous miracle than any of the other, others that had been raised from the dead. <laughs> because of this, the whole dynamics, the uniqueness that surrounded it. He'd been, in the bit dead, he'd, been dead for, for, he'd been dead and buried for four days. Everybody else that Jesus raised from the dead, they didn't get buried yet. This man had been dead. He was buried. And according to his sister, his body now stinketh. And so this, had, this, is a unique, this is a unique miracle because according to a, a, all Jewish belief of the time, and it's probably correct, after three days you've departed. You're not, you're not hovering around anymore. You're in your, you're in your eternal dwelling place. You either, you either in the presence of the Lord or you're cast out of his presence and wake up in a place called the pit. And now the Lord calls him back from the place where he's now settled in for the rest of the ages. Zacchaeus isn't there just to see the man who raised up Lazarus from the dead. He's there to see Jesus. Jesus immediately stops and says, Zacchaeus, come down because I must go to your house today. And this is, this is his response to any sincere and true heart. It says, I'm done. Or, I don't know. I don't really know how to express this. Maybe it's. Maybe you could say, "I'm done with pursuing my own life." I'm not sure how many people actually come to that. Maybe. Maybe that's not the right. Maybe that's not the right disposition that you have. Maybe it's not. I'm done. I'm done living my own life. I'm done doing things the way that I do them. Maybe it's rather, you know, you finally come to the recognition of you just desperately need something more that you suddenly you wake up to realize. Wait a second. Wait a minute now. Life is more than what I've been living. Or, or maybe they're just, maybe, maybe it just because you respond to the Holy Ghost who says, who says, I'm here and I want to know you. However, whatever the process of thinking is, something has got to happen to God's people to where they won't forsake his presence for a song to worship by. They won't forsake his presence for a cheap thrill that is in the realms of the demonic. They won't forsake his presence for anything. They, there's a, an event that takes place in the, where men's hearts begin to long after God, where we begin to have an, 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 an understanding of how much he longs for us. These are just, this is an indescribable dynamic, really. It's just, you lost, I'm lost for words to even begin to try to express what I'm, what I feel and what God has done for us when he gave to us the great gift of his only begotten son, when he gave to us the gift of salvation, when he gave to us the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want you to open your Bibles with me in, in, chapter, in Luke chapter 11. And just, let's just contemplate the verse of Scripture here for a minute and I, I, here's what I know. I know that once you have an encounter with God, you have such a burning longing. Once you have an encounter with God in the sense that you want to know him. Once you have an encounter with God in the sense that <laughs> you want to be with him. You want to be a part of his kingdom. You want to be on his side. 
there ultimately becomes this great longing and this great need that is insatiable. You, you just want to know him more. It's, you know, it's exemplified in Moses' life as he stood before the fire of God in his first encounter with the Lord and heard the voice of God and actually seen the similitude of God. But then it kept getting him more and more and more intense as time went along. It didn't get less intense. He didn't just sit back and remember what happened. I mean, it's so good. You want not only want to have that to happen again, you actually want to be able to live in that realm. Huh? Because I'm telling you right now, I don't care who you are. As soon as you find something good, you'd like to stay there. If you're allowed, if you find something good, you'd like to stay there. And then if there's any possibility that you can imagine, it's something good and it lasts forever. So most people, they say, well, if it's good, it ain't going to last forever, right? The, the, the idea that no good thing lasts forever. No, this is a good thing that just keeps getting better and better and better. This goes beyond all the things that, that life lessens, quote, unquote, life lessens. Really, the death lessens. Because the Lord said, John, who, who handled the word of life, beheld him and saw him, <laughs> who, whose ears, you know, listened to him, whose, you know, life interacted with him. He said, he that knows Christ Jesus uh, has life. And he that has Christ Jesus literally possesses him, interacts with him, has that kind of fellowship and communion with him, has life. But he that does not know him, and then in another place he says, he that does not have him, possess him, interacts with him, doesn't have life. But, it, but it's literally dead while, he, while they live. Actually, John, not only John, of course, Jesus did as well, defined death as the absence of the presence of the living God in your life. People are living dead. And when you're living dead, you're just trying to mitigate your pain and your sorrow and your suffering and your misery. And here God in his mercy makes a way where no matter who we are, no matter what our background is, no matter what, how we've lived, no matter what we've done, he's made a way now where we can come step in and begin to interact with his person, begin to uh, experience his life. That, that's, the tr that's the terrible thing about religion. It's a substitute. It's a terrible substitute that prevents people from ever really going all the way with God. And experiencing this life, tasting of his goodness, of his presence. Because once you do, you're not, you don't want to be absent with it. You're not willing to trade it in for the lust of the flesh. You're not really willing to trade it in for religion. You're not willing to trade it in for your self-interest. You're not willing to trade it in for anything. It's just too wonderful. It's too beautiful. God wants people to come. I mean, goodness, when you, when, look. When you were dead and now that you live, why would you ever want to go back and be dead again? I'm alive now. I don't want to go back. I'm not dreaming to go back and be dead. Amen. And the God, God the Father wants to contrast to be so radical for you and me. He wants that contrast to be, to be really relevant to our decision-making process. When we're faced with, the, with these things that Satan is doing to defy God, destroy men. I'm telling you, Satan hunts the souls of men with sin to destroy them. And men are blind and foolish and ignorant. And the only possibility that men will ever get out of their blindness, their foolishness, and their ignorance is the mercy and the grace of God that has brought salvation to us, that has broken the power of mind-blinding spirits, that has given to us enough knowledge and understanding to realize, first and foremost, that he lives, and second and foremost, that these things are wrong. That we would allow in our life that are contrary to his ways. And so in his great love and his great mercy, he made a way to where that he keep us <laughs> he, until we get it. He made a way for our sins to be washed in his blood. Even after we had been born again, born of the spirit and born of the word. It's almost you almost hesitate to even say it. Because it's almost like people think, well, you know, I've got an excuse. Because a lot of people are looking around for an excuse. The people that are looking for an excuse, they aren't partakers of this. The people that are looking for an excuse, they're looking for a reason to get away with sin. They've never tasted this life. They don't know him. 
have no knowledge of him. Because once you've been touched by him, once you get a changed heart and a changed spirit, it's absolutely the opposite feeling. It's not, I don't want that anymore. Not I'm looking for an excuse to do it. I don't want that in my life anymore. And so Father in his goodness and his mercy has this means by which he keeps us until we get it. He doesn't lower the bar. He still is, makes the calling as high as, it, as it, he has given it, as it truly exists to be, as it is. That we are walking in oneness with them. That we're a new creation. We are partakers of the divine nature. We've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And oh my goodness, if you could ultimately make all that is in this world, all that seems to take men prisoner with its, with its lust, as you could, if you could really identify it as something that is decaying something that would destroy you which is the corruption that is in this world the decaying the decaying power of this world the life destroying powers of this world perhaps then people would have then a greater resolve to say no i i was reading um uh, one theologian's thesis on the judgments of God, and especially as it reflects on the day of his wrath and his argument of why men must continually hear the message of the wrath of God against sin so that they would be ultimately motivated and steered towards making right choices. And though I understand what the theologian was saying, I totally disagree with them. What men must do is they must have an encounter with a living God who changes men's hearts. <laughs> I had a preacher, I think he's probably, he's done more in missions than anyone. I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. Since, as far as I'm concerned, and, and, and I'm not the only one, since Livingston, he's, what, what God has done through him in missions is absolutely over the top. And he, he called me up the other morning. He says, you know, Mark, I'm, I'm convinced that people are never going to be different until they change from the inside out. And he's talking about Christians. And my dear brother believes in the divine nature, and he believes that when you're born of the Spirit, you, you now become uh, spirit. <laughs> in other words, you become completely that which God has created and made anew, and nothing remains old. He's persuaded of a complete and a final salvation. But reality of it is, is so many of God's people... They, they won't, they're not willing to grow and they're not willing to mature. They're not willing to change. And so, uh, you know, when you're, when you're over emissions and you're dealing with a lot of, of generals, as it were, that you're responsible for that are throughout different places in the earth, and you've dealt with them over and over and over again for years and said, you can't do that and you can't do it that way. But yet they continue to do that and continue to do it that way. And ultimately, they can't see that they're bringing harm to the kingdom. They're actually hurting the advancement of the kingdom. There's no way they can see it. So it doesn't matter how much teaching, it doesn't matter how much instruction that you give them. There's, until they change on the inside, they're going to continue to do it the way that they naturally, instinctively do it. And reality of it is, is that's the situation that all mankind are in. The lost and those that are found. Those who are unsaved and those that are saved. I'm I, I said, yeah, I said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, the only way, the way that people are going to change is they've got to be KO'd by God, totally knocked out, slammed on the floor and left there to stay. And then when they get up, it's time for another KO session. And, and, and it's a good knocked out. It's a good because it's an encounter with God that causes us to realize everything about ourselves and everything about the way we do things and everything about the way that we think has got to change. You know, people think that, uh, that they only, only about 50% of them needs to change. 
Some people are worse off than that. They think that only 10% needs to change. Maybe there could even be worse than that. Maybe there could be, and I believe there are, because I'm saying this somewhat facetiously and somewhat rhetorically. Huh? Is there anyone that doesn't need to change? Because I think that some people believe that they're good, they don't need to change at all. But what happens when a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, has an encounter with God and then recognizes that Father has come to fully empower us to live in all of his glory, to live in all of his presence, to be filled up with everything that belongs to him, now to represent him to a world that is around us and that all we have to do is be willing to be separated unto him so he can, we can be in his school every day. We can go to his classroom every day. We can be filled up with his expressions continually. What happens to that person? That person begins to be set upon a life and a, a, a walk that really is the definition of salvation. It is the definition of what it means to commit your life to Jesus Christ. People want to believe that what it means to commit your life to Jesus Christ is that you just ask Jesus to come in your heart and nothing really changes. You continue on living the same kind of life, doing the same kind of things, and now you're gonna, when you die, you'll go to heaven. That's nonsense. It's not, it, has, it has nothing to do with reality. And more than likely, that person is not even saved. More than right, likely, they've just been born into religion. Hey, people who are born into Hindu religion, people who get initiated in Hindu religion, they believe they're right. People who are born into Mormon religion, they believe they're right. Uh, Buddhism, I, I'll go down the list. There's a Christian religion too. People don't know about it. And the Christian religion needs to hear this. You need to receive the life of Jesus. God has come to kill you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And it's voluntary. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's a miracle of instantaneous work of grace. Where you're dead with Christ Jesus, crucified with him. Dead. Over. Life. Over. Dead. If you can still refine your life, you got yourself a problem if you want to hold on to that. You got yourself a problem. Jesus is on his way now, you know, into, he's passed out of Jericho, he's left Jericho, he's, now in Jerusalem, it's now four days before he's going to be crucified. He said, unless he begins to talk about the fact that he's going to go give his life for us. He said, unless a person loses life, he cannot find it. And he begins to address us. He's telling us what he's going to do for us. How that he is going to sow his life as a seed into the ground so it can bring forth much fruit. So that we might live through him. Live. Live a different life, not the same life. Live, not dead while we live. They that have Christ Jesus possess them. They have received the life of Christ. They are alive. They that have not received the life of Christ are dead while they live. This is the gospel. It's the gospel that people haven't heard. They're still integrated with the world around them. They still are, are consumed with all that the world enjoys, and they have become a friend of the world and don't even, don't even know it. And it's time people rise up and begin to preach the gospel in such a way that there can be an encounter with the Most High God. God wants to have an encounter with us. Here's what the Holy Spirit is, is present to do. To grab a hold of you and say, behold, here am I. It is that encounter that changes the hearts of men. Now, I know that rebellious men can have an encounter with God and it won't change their heart. They just become more rebellious. Pharaoh had an encounter with God, made him more rebellious. Many in Israel had an encounter with God, they didn't want to listen, just made him more rebellious. But I'm talking about the person who wants to know God. Father's, listen, Father is willing that all men might be saved. Listen, but all men are not willing to be saved. I'm going to say it again. God is willing that all men be saved, but all men aren't willing to be saved. We, here's the reality. The light has sprung up. Those who sit in darkness and under the shadow of death have seen great light. But unfortunately, they didn't want to stay there. Because they love, they love darkness rather than light. Because they love evil. Because their deeds are evil and they don't want to be reproved and they don't want to be corrected. Father in his mercy made a way 
so that everybody could come stand in his presence and behold his goodness and his glory and have him personally point out to us, that's wrong, don't do it. That's evil, don't allow it. That sin is abhorrent to me. That is iniquity. You can't, you can't interact with me to have, and have this in your life. See, he's, God is... God is defined as holy, and, and holiness has no definition outside of him. And holiness means that he's absolutely separate from everything that is in the world. Do you still like him? Let me say this. God is holy, and that's defined by the fact that he's separated from everything that is in this world. He has no fellowship with it. To eat, to, for you and I to have fellowship with it, he says it's an act of treason against his kingdom. It's an act of violence against him. It's an act of hostility against him. Huh? He's separate. He's separate. That's what holiness is. That's what it means. It means to be separated. It means literally to be separated from everything that is death, from everything that is darkness, from everything that is ugly, from everything that is sickness, from everything that is disease, from everything, you know, come on, it's every bad thing. But we don't get it that way because we still believe in our mind and our thinking that there's still a bunch of good things in this world and we want them. We, 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 <laughs> there's no end to it, is there? There's, men have an insatiable lust for more, and it can't ever be satisfied. The only possibility is that God, we allow God to come and rescue us. And the beautiful thing of it is, is he stands at the door of every man's heart, and he knocks. Many people won't open the door to him because they say, I've already got religion. He stands at the door and knocks. I, I'm already saved. Stands at the door and knocks. Because they don't understand that salvation means deliverance. If we just started saying, if we started talking about salvation in terms of what it really means and what it just equivalent, equivalent translated English word is, is to say deliverance. Then people will say, wait a minute. You know, saved does mean to be delivered. I, to be saved means I was rescued. Huh? I was drowning and somebody saved me. Huh? So maybe we want to say that they're saved while they're still drowning. No, you're not saved. You're drowning. Oh, I'm saved. Well, why? Why are you drowning? Huh? People want to say, then we want to sit behind the bars, the prison, in their pain and in their sin and their iniquity and say, I've been delivered. Well, then why are you still in that cell? Oh, I'm delivered. Praise God, I'm delivered. Well, come on out. And come on over here into the marvelous light. Come on over here into the realms of divine glory. Come on over here into a place where all of a sudden religious activities won't do. Listen to me. I'm telling you the revival fires of God are burning in the earth today where people aren't interested in a song and a prayer and a praise and a Bible study and a church meeting that is absence of his divine presence and the burning power of his glory. God is looking for some people who are going to have a hungry heart that they'll do anything to just get a glimpse of him. It doesn't matter. All, all, all things far. Just anything. Let me get a glimpse of him. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the hungry heart is the desperate soul that is going to change the dynamics of the human condition. What does God do for us? It is mercy and his love. While, we're, while we still don't, get, still don't get it. So long as we do want to get it, even though we don't get it. And we find ourselves going out into darkness to get something that we think we want. Some, something that, some pleasure that cannot satisfy. Something that we think we want that is completely other than God. Father in his mercy has the Holy Ghost right there saying, wrong, you're wrong. Convicting us. If we run to him and we say, Lord Jesus, cleanse me, wash me in your blood. <laughs> what does he do? He immediately washes us. He immediately, cl he immediately cleanses us because we want to be right. We don't want to continue to be wrong. This is the difference. Many people want to continue to be wrong and say that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses them. No, the blood of Jesus Christ does not cleanse that person. 
Because the Lord said, if you walk in the light as he's in the light, then you have fellowship one with another. You have this communion. And then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. Jesus said, I forgive you 490 times in a day so long as you've got a heart to forgive as well. So long as you want to do it my way. Because when he's saying, literally, when Jesus says that, he's pairing out those that are in this world, those who are of a wrong nature and a wrong spirit from those that belong to him. He's pairing them out. Because there's nobody going to want to forgive like that if their heart's not changed. If their nature's not changed. They're going to hold an offense. They're going to hold a grudge. There's so many people that sit in the church and call themselves Christians. And they're full of offense. They're full of grudges. They're sick spiritually. They're diseased with unforgiveness. And that yet they say that the Lord Jesus has forgiven them. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. I don't care how much you say you love him. He has not. He said, I'll forgive you as long as you forgive. I'll show mercy as long as you show mercy. Really what he's saying is my love is going to be able to keep you and impact you so long as you're willing to abide in my love and give my love. (laughs) When we want to love on Father, we love on the brethren and sister and two. Because the brethren are part of the, considered part of this. It's the family, the children of God. Hallelujah. There's everything's everything about our lives gotta be corrected. Everything. Somebody said, Well, the Lord's brought us back to a place where Adam was before he sinned. Yeah, in part, but it's even more intense than that. Because now we've been brought all the way back, but we still got the knowledge, we got the knowledge of good and evil. We've been all been, been, been brought all the way back. God in his love. Not only gave us the gift of his only begotten son, God, the eternal word, made flesh so that you and I could behold the glory of God and hear peace on earth, goodwill towards men. But he also gave Jesus Christ for us to deliver us from a a terrible tyrant. You just got finished reading about Haman and, and Esther. And Haman had set himself to destroy all the Jews. And there was an intercessor, Mordecai. And Mordecai comes to his, to his niece, whom we call Esther. Hadassah, right? That's prettier. And he tells Hadassah, we've got to intercede. Or the whole nation will be lost. And what is it going to cost you? It's going to cost you your life. She said, okay, just have everybody fast and pray for me, and if I die, I die. Come on, she, she laid down her life for a nation. And so, you know, the, ultimately, the great deliverance came, and the proclamation went forth for everybody to go and send presents one to another, send portions one to another, and buy presents for the poor, and celebrate and have days of feasting and joy. Well, a day of feasting and joy came because Christ Jesus was born. And he delivered us at, the Calv- at Calvary's cross. First and foremost, he lived out a life and condemned sin in the flesh and said it doesn't belong in the body. Sin doesn't belong here. No demon spirit belongs in our lives. He lived out a life as a 100% man. God made and manifested in the flesh and so showed us that there is a walk with God where you don't have to have all the pollution of darkness in your life. And look how beautiful it is. And then he went to an altar and offered himself upon a, on a tree, sacrificed for you and me so that you and I could have his precious blood to cleanse us. So first and foremost, he delivered us from a far worse tyrant and evil man who set to destroy all humanity far worse than Haman Jesus delivered men who had no way out all mankind giving all mankind deliverance an opportunity to be transformed by the power of God and no longer be under the reign of Satan an amazing amazing gift of God gift doesn't stop there then he comes and he, to our lives and he comes to each one of us and he knocks on the door of our heart. And he said, if any man will open up, I'll come and live inside. I'll come live with you. I'll come fill you. I'll come, I'll come be in you and you'll be in me. I, he, he looks at all mankind. He says, come dwell in my house. Come be in my house. Come be a part of my family. And has the miracle power to make us a part of his family. To totally regenerate us. To make us totally 100% new. 
This is what salvation means. It means to be made totally new. You can, you can hold your hands up and praise God. Say Jesus all you want. But there's a heart that's got to be changed on the inside of you before a reality of God is, is, is a part of your life. The gift that he gave to us is a new heart as well. He didn't stop with you. He didn't stop. One gift after the next gift. He's just pouring gifts out on us. Gave us a new heart. Gave us a new spirit. Didn't stop there. Because then he gave us the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Spirit of the living God. The presence of the living God where we can walk it around in the manifest presence of God that goes beyond men's wildest thinking. Something that you've got to ask for. Something that you've got to crave. That you've got to want. That you've got to be willing to participate with God to have. People in the days of Solomon so wanted to be a part of his kingdom. So wanted to be a part of his administration. So wanted to be a part of his ruling and governing body. Because it was so amazing. Solomon's kingdom and the wisdom and the wealth that Father gave him. But Jesus has uh, greater than Solomon's here. And the kingdom is far, far greater than anything that could ever be described about Solomon's kingdom. And one of the biggest challenges that we have as Father is purpose to, to dwell in the unseen realm so he can interact with us in such a way to develop something on the inside of us that could never be developed if we were seeing him and sitting down with him and personally had him bodily over at our house. I personally have him here with me right now and at my house. But I interact with them in a different way. And you can have that same encounter with God. You can have that same walk with God. You can have that same relationship with God. Every, but you go, here's what you have to do. You have to sign up for everything to be changed. Pete, listen, listen. Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. When you are lost, you're looking to be found. There are a lot of people out there that don't want to be found. He didn't come to seek and save those who don't want to be found. People need to get that straight. Hey, you're lost. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I've been watching you for the past 20 years. You've been walking around in a big circle. They're lost and don't know it. Many people are lost and don't know it. However, when you and I, as the people of the living God, begin to take a hold of the presence of the Lord, Father will communicate His divine power and glory through our lives. And I'm not sure that He does it Otherwise, I mean, he does it to an effect, but he's purposed that you and I be the covenant relationship with him, covenant partners with him, and covenant relationship with him to go and preach this gospel. And he's there with the, the, his word being preached, manifesting his glory, showing forth his power. The angel of the Lord, in other words, was able to show up to Cornelius' house, but he said, You got to get Peter. Oh, well, you know. Cornelius had an encounter with an angel. That's pretty radical. But it didn't change nothing. It did change his heart. You know, a year later, he had been trying to rub his eyes, wondering, wow, was that a vision or was that a dream? Was he in the body or out of the body? Did that really happen to me? Huh? He said, go send for Peter. Because when Peter came down, an event would happen that would be with Cornelius in his house every day for the rest of his life. The glory of the gifts of God would be heaped upon Cornelius' house. The glory of the precious gift of the blood of Jesus Christ to wash and cleanse every stain of sin would have become relevant and real and meaningful to him at that moment. Something that he could, he could feel and know and understand. A knowledge that you can't have unless God gives you that knowledge. A knowledge that doesn't exist unless you have that knowledge. Right within the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, it's just ideas and concepts. But suddenly, the Holy Ghost makes it real and meaningful. The blood of Jesus Christ is there. You're broken over it. The the, there's a cleansing that takes place. And that's where the gift begins. Then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and changes you into a new creation and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. And, and he doesn't stop there. He puts his spirit with, on the inside of you. What spirit does he put on the inside of you? He puts on the inside of you a separated spirit, a consecrated spirit. A spirit that says, I'm not of the world, and I don't want to be of the world. Amen. I saw this person driving out of this driveway one day, and he had the, it was when the sticker first came out. It was like a number of years ago. I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. Not of this world sticker. Huh? 
And I knew the person that lived next door to him. I said, that's great, man. You live in by, right by a person who's got a hold of the gospel. He said, no, he doesn't. He just got the sticker. <laughs> no, he doesn't have the gospel. He just got the sticker. How many people just got the sticker? They just got the sticker. But I'm, what God has done is he's really made a way, a genuine way, for you and I to be not of this world, even as he's not of this world. What does that mean? That means to be separate, to be consecrated, to belong to another realm, <laughs> to have another kind of pleasures, <laughs> all together, real pleasures. You know, I, I love leading evil in the prayer that is my own, so you can get your own. Well, it's a good one. I love to lead people in the prayer. Lord, strengthen me in my body against sickness and disease. Lord, strengthen me in my soul. But I love only you and desire only holy emotions and seek only those pleasures that are at your right hand. Because that's where all the pleasures really are. Amen. We've been lied to. We've been deceived. There's a mocking spirit, mocking God, mocking his life, saying that death, it's death, masquerading around his life, saying, I'm life. Come to me. And people are flocking to that masquerader. To that liar, to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. I believe that God's, all God's people need to do is begin to just deal with, are you, do you disobey? Careful, you may be of the, one of those who are the children of disobedience. If you disobey and you don't want to be made obedient, you surely are. If you disobey... If you trip up in sin and go, Father, I don't want this. Forgive me. I can't believe I did this. And your heart's broken about it and you want change. Then the blood of Jesus Christ is meaningful. Because you're in the light. What is the light doing? The light is showing every false way. Hear me. Because there's not a lot of people listening. The light shows you what's wrong. The light shows you the death. The light shows you the things that are displeasing to the Father that are not of his ways. And he's not compromising. He, Father, how is it that you are who you are? Because he doesn't compromise. He's totally separate. There's no compromise. <laughs> People say, oh, write a book about how to raise a family. You don't want to read it. <laughs> and your wife really doesn't want to read it. Because then I tell you, don't compromise with anything. All the rest of the books, of marriage books, family raising books, children books, tell you to compromise. I'm going to say compromise is totally demonic. Oh, we're coming to an agreement. Don't need to. You just need to be in an agreement with Father, and I'll be in agreement with Father, and then we'll be in agreement. But for us to sit down here and get in agreement, that's compromise. Are you listening? You just get in agreement with Papa. Just get in agreement with Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then everything's going to work out good. But why? Papa loves us so much. He doesn't want us to be destroyed with death. There is no way to compromise. He says, listen, you've got to do it absolutely this way because you don't understand what's powers are working and trying to take advantage of you to destroy you. You don't have the wisdom or the insight to know what life's about. person is 100 years old is as a newborn baby when it comes to those things. Now I was sitting around the table this morning saying, you know, I love children. They just tell it like it is. They tell it like they see it, you know, or rather, not tell it like it is. They just tell it like they see it. They call it like they see it, right? Jesus come in Jerusalem. What are all the kids doing? Here he is, Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest. They're shouting praises to the king. He's obviously, he's just calling it like it is. Everybody else trying to figure it out. Kids are just going to stand up and call it like it is. They're going to say right or wrong. Just pure heart. We get all complicated. We get everything all distorted. Now it's got to line up with our perception and what we think and what we believe. We don't, any, we don't know anything as we ought to know. Father and his goodness has come to lead us and guide us and teach us and train us in his ways. Not in our ways. Not in what, want, what we want. It, people say, oh, Lord Jesus, are you running with me? No, he's not. The question is, are you running with him? Because he's surely not following you around. No. Hallelujah. Huh? And people write, they, they do this little painting, you know, where there's two sets of footsteps, and then there's one step, footsteps, and prints, and then it said, well, why, why, where, where did the other set go? Well, I carried you. No, he did it. He didn't carry you. You're on your own. 
If he carried you, you'd be over in glory land. Huh? You'd be in glory. Because he's not going to carry you into the world, into your mess, into your pain, into your suffering, into your sorrow, into your sickness, into your disease, into your iniquity. The Holy Ghost has come to lead you and to guide you in all truth, not some truth. He's not going to take you to the bar. He's not taking you to the dance. He's not taking you to the filth. He's not taking you to the immorality. He's not taking you to the ungodliness. He's coming to be our gift. The greatest possible gift that could ever be imagined. You know, we're we, we celebrating right now. We're celebrating. This is the time to rejoice and to celebrate and send portions to everybody and get gifts for the poor. Huh? One of my delights is to be able to pick out some poor person, a really needy person, and, and, and do something for them, especially the household of faith. Okay? Because there's a lot of children that are poor. They're born into poor situations, poor families. You know? I mean, they would, be, they would be fortunate and blessed to get a plastic, some little plastic little toy. You can bless them. I mean, when you look at Feast of Tabernacles, which is one of the great declarations of God's gifts, it was the time, huh? once again, you read about it in Nehemiah chapter 8, right? Huh? Rejoice before the Lord. Have a celebration and a feast. Send portions one to another. Huh? Provide gifts for the poor. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't need the spirit of Christmas. I have the Holy Ghost. He is the spirit of Christmas. I, Christmas is every day for us, but we got one day consecrated to celebrate this. Somebody said, ah, it's a pagan holiday. Look, first and foremost, no one really knows for certain who Jesus, what day Jesus was born on. And so December 25th is good as day as any other to celebrate his birth. Huh? Praise God for a consecrated day to celebrate his birth. Huh? I don't like Christmas trees. I love Christmas trees. I like lights on them and all kinds. Oh, it's pagan. No, it ain't. You're pagan. Oh, well, I look back in the history. Look, you can look back in history and spin it in every different direction. It has nothing to do with that. It has to, it has to do with the celebrating of the life of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No matter about all these things, get rid of the Christmas tree. I mean, come on, I can do without a Christmas tree. I'm not trying to make that a point. But the bottom line of it is people make points that try to make points of things that are irrelevant. It's nonsense. Meanwhile, they continue to live their life in, in sin, iniquity, and ungodliness. That's the point. That's the filth. That's the problem. That's what's pagan, you see. That's what's wrong. Praise God for the day. Praise God for the day. Praise God for the day that we get to celebrate the gift. I'm celebrating his birthday. You celebrate your birthday. And we're supposed to all get happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. We celebrate his birthday and really get happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I think it's going a little bit too far to sing happy birthday to Jesus. <laughs> I think there's far better ways to express that sentiment. <laughs> because it needs to come deep from the heart. Kennedy. <laughs> Because in reality, hallelujah, that was the day he became the gift to us to show us this way of life. Because all, he's always been. He's always existed. He's always been there eternally in, in that wonderful glory that he has possessed. Before there was ever a beginning. Figure that out. Somebody said, how can there ever be a beginning? Well, it's a miracle. <laughs> and everything about God's, oh, how can God do this and how can God do that? Miracle. Everything he does is a miracle. Nobody has any answers for that, okay? Just anytime anybody asks you, how can there be three in one, on, whatever, just say it's a miracle. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. How could the vast universe and expanse of all God's creation, you know, all these things that will supposedly be created by God, it's a miracle. It's a miracle no matter how you look at it. Everything he does is a miracle. He's so good. Can we read this? Let me read this verse of Scripture to you. Today I'm, today, I'm dealing with a lot of different things. I'm dealing with falsehood in this place. I'm dealing with people who believe they're right and they're wrong. Huh? I'm dealing with people's hearts also who are right and, and they get overwhelmed with condemnation. I'm dealing with people who are being called by God to come into a relationship who don't want to change. The reality of it is, as God has shown me, most people have more religion than they have relationship. Because relationship is what happens to you when you're not in the meeting. Hallelujah. The Jejo Rapaya. It's the sign of name, Bratai. That's going on when you're not in the meeting. It's the shout, it's the praise, it's the glory, it's the lifestyle. Hallelujah. It's this it's this wonderful realm of living in his his in his goodness, which is is as broad as 
and expansive is his creation. That's why people, many people have more religion than they have relationship. We God, I'm talking to people today, you know, here right now, that need to change and you want to. Father got something for everybody. I'm gonna tell you right now, the best place to be is to be in a place that you know you need to change and you want to. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I know I need to change, but you know I'm not I it ain't gonna work. I've tried. Yeah, you tried. It's not a, it shouldn't be a surprise to you that you're a miserable failure. <laughs> uh, look at what else you've done with the rest of your life in every other area. You're financially a mess. Every, I mean, come on, you know. Emotionally, come on. Now you're going to take care of the things spiritually. You need God to come and invade your life. He wants to come fill you with his blessings. He wants to come fill you with his divine goodness. Huh. Oh, I want it to happen now. He's not running a fast food restaurant, and he's not raising brats. He's raising, he's, he's, ra he's brought us into the kingdom of God, sit us at his table, and he's raising highly disciplined people to rule, kings and, and queens and princes to rule and reign with them for the rest of eternity. Come on. I want to have it now. Well, it is happening now. You're getting called right now. You're going to be taught right now. Huh? You're getting sorted out right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, we were just, we were talking, we were sitting around talking last night. We, we always checking up. Where are you at in the Word now? Because it's, com you know, it's, we're, like, we're in a race. It's okay to be competitive like that. We're, we're in a race. It's a different kind of competition. Though. Nobody's getting hurt around here. It's a good race. Of course, we don't even ask Ruth Ann anymore because she's so far out ahead of us, we just all get discouraged, you know. <laughs> but, you know, Ann started saying, you know, it's just amazing. And, and, and we've gone through the Word of God a lot. We've read through the Word. We've read through the Bible a lot. I mean, there was a time in my life where I wouldn't even eat until I read 10 Psalms. If it, it, of course, when you get Psalms 119, your <laughs> food's cold. But nonetheless... She's going, I just can't Im imagine all of the verses of Scripture that have stood out to me in the Psalms alone. Where have they been? He opens up our eyes to behold them. They become meaningful to us. Before, it was just a sentence. It was a sentence. And now all of a sudden, it means something. There's something about somebody else. Now it applies personally to me. Now I see that in my life. Now it's fitting over and over here. He opens up our eyes to behold wonderful things. He gives us something that's so beautiful that when you ask him for it, you may not even know you got it for a while. He gives you wisdom. And in that wisdom, you begin to live out a life the way that he designed it. You begin to understand things that before there was no possibility that you could understand them. Wisdom is a beautiful, rich, wonderful blessing. Wisdom causes you to see everything different and you feel terrible about the way you lived yesterday. How do you like that? Wisdom causes you to say, my goodness, I've lived like such a child. I've lived like such a brat. I've lived so selfishly. Huh? Wisdom will cause you to watch, watch Scrooge and go, oh, no, there's too much Scrooge in me. Yeah. Watch out now. I'm going to go, I'm going to shake this thing down. Because there's a lot of people, who can't, they don't have the wisdom. They don't even see that. They're lost and don't know it. They're so self-absorbed and self-consumed and constantly trying to mitigate their problems that they're self-justified. They won't see they're wrong because it hurts too much. Because they hang on to rejection and, and bitterness and past events. It hurts too much. I can't. I've been told I'm wrong all my life. Don't tell me again. I'm telling you right now, the majority of human people beings live in that realm right now the majority of people it's satan's trick to ensnare the souls of men that they will never be corrected they'll never love let the righteous smite me <laughs> i go upon my high places and see what the lord says when he rebukes me and they'll never be able to step in to the highly disciplined uh, uh, correction of the of the spirit of the lord that will bring every blessing and every good thing of god into our life all father's doing is saying you want to be blessed walk over here don't walk over get over here this is where it's at dig right here 
Huh? I'm talking about another one of those glorious holidays that people have made terrible. Passover, which everybody calls Easter. Now we're going to go Easter egg hunting. Fine, beautiful. Now what do you do with the little ones? You're trying to show them where the eggs are at. Right? Trying to give them some hints. Because they're just, right, when they're Anna's age, they're just standing there. And all the kids are getting all the best eggs. <laughs> with the money and the jelly beans and all the rest of that stuff. So you're like trying to help them. His father, over here. Come here. Come here. No. Come here. No. I, I've got my own things to do. I'm sick and tired of the pastor. Come here. I can't stand to listen to him another service. Don't get Micaiah. He's never got any good thing to say about me. Because you, everything about you, Ahab, needs to change, man. There's nothing about you that's right. Don't get Micaiah. Bring me the prophets of Baal. They're the only ones that like me. They're the only ones going to say, you're a good guy, you're a good king, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, and come back to the meeting. Next time, bring more money. Now, that's profane. Now, that's evil. To come and tread upon his courts and his house without a desperate and hungry heart to know him, to encounter him, to do it his way, to say, Lord, I'm here, I'm consecrated. Feel me now, I just want your life. I just want your way. Well, that's, that's profane. That's pagan. You with me? To be of any other heart, of any other nature? Because I'm keeping Christmas every day. I'm keeping Passover. People want to call it Easter. I, that's terrible for me, but, but, huh? It's all about his resurrection. It's all about the life-giving gifts of God that's changed me, that's brought me into the family of God, that's made me a new creation, that's blessed me, not only with every good thing right now, every good and perfect thing. Did you know Father's blessed us with every good and perfect thing? Hey, when you got every good, perfect thing, why would you want anything else? So I said, ah, you tell me you can live without sin. Yeah, I got good, every good and perfect thing. Why not? Well, isn't sin good? No. I have not found any good thing in it. Well, how about the pleasure of it? You know, you just get a little wisdom and you'll discover there's no pleasure there, actually. It's pain. It's pain masquerading as pleasure. Hmm? It's demonic lies insulting the kingdom of God, the purpose of person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You tell me you can live without sin? Yeah. When you're filled up with righteousness, you can. When you're filled up with his goodness and your glory, his glory, you can. Because see, sin is, sin is far more than just missing the mark. Sin is an act of treason against God. I had a pastor one day saying, oh, he, you know, pastor, how can you say how can you say that we can live without the lust of the flesh, the lust of the unbridled life? How can you say we can live without sin? I said, okay, well, let's go through the list. He's sitting there all studious. I said, can you live without adultery? He looks at me like, well, of course. Okay, good. Well, we're halfway there. You don't have to go run around committing adultery every day. Well, no, that's ridiculous. Thank you. You're helping me make my point. How about homosexuality, uncleanness, bestialities? You've been lusting for any animals lately. <laughs> I mean, I'm making my point. I'm getting real strong with this thing, huh? huh? And if I was, look, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you talk about the lust of the flesh when you're over in Irian Jaya, over out in, in for certain places in Irian Jaya in Indonesia, people where the cannibals still exist, they lusted at you for a different kind of a lust. They want to they eat your right shoulder in, a, in the next you know, bowl of, of, of stew. You don't want nobody to listen at you like that. <laughs> you don't want nobody wanting you like that. The rest of it is just as bad. It's just that you don't, you don't have the same kind of, you don't see it the same way. It's a slow death, not a quick one. They're not headhunters. So praise God, what we got done with adultery, uncleanness, which is the way that the Lord describes homosexuality, bestiality, groups all... Sexual immorality that is twisted like that in one group. Well, we're good. You don't have to have that every day? Come on, Pastor, come on. No, I'm, we're just laying out the foundation. 
And then we go on to fornication. And so well, we've already dealt with that, right? Well, we don't. How about lasciviousness? Do you have to have that in your life? Well, no, I don't. Now, most, a lot of people don't realize that they allow lasciviousness to go on. They don't even recognize it because our whole culture is set up. It's a lascivious culture, a sensuous culture. Huh? That's where you begin to sit and lust after something, okay? You're vicariously lusting after something. You better watch out what kind of, what kind of movies you're being drawn into, huh? Because it's got a whole gamut. Ultimately, they set up the plot so you hate the guy and you want him dead. Hurry up, somebody kill him. You're about to jump in there and kill him yourself. What? Watch out. What? That thing, this stuff is designed to play on your emotions. It's designed to, to give you a thrill emotionally, a very different way. You've got to watch out for that stuff. Because then you walk, and then you have to get finished, how do you get finished interacting with that mess? Then you trying to walk around and have normal relationships, and all that stuff has sowed seeds in, seeds in your spirit, and you've got problems going on with people around you because you just bought into all that mess. Huh? Watch out now. So we got finished with that, and he, you know, he was kind of a little, he was stumbling a little bit there. He was kind of, he was, well, no, I don't need that. But he was stumbling a bit. So yeah, you're going to have to gird up yourself. Because that's something you can say no to. Are you listening to me? Then we're people, okay, how about hatred? How you, how, uh, well, start off, witchcraft. You just got to gotta do some witchcraft. You got to get into cursing. You got to get into cursing some people. Well, when you start looking at witchcraft in certain ways, rebellion, people practice it. They're not going to heaven. They're not going to heaven. Because if you practice sin, you're not going to heaven. Huh? You're not going. You're not on your way to heaven. Because you're not living in heaven right now. If you're not living in heaven right now, you're not going to heaven. Because it's, it's about heaven now. It's about his presence now. It's about his spirit now. Oh, well, I believe that once you give your life to Jesus, you're always saved. Well, did you give your life to Jesus? Did he come in, move in, change you? And now you're so full of his glory? Then, yeah, you got it. Yeah, you're fine. You're good. But if you say you give your life to Jesus and he's filled you up and you're continuing on in the same way that you've been living, you, somebody lied to you. You've been deceived. And it's true. It's true. People are in, people are in prison to religion. Can't be corrected. They can't be changed. They've hardened the heart against the truth. They've hardened the heart against God. It's true. Listen to me. Then when we start going on down the list, you know, and things start getting a little shaky. Variance, strife, sedition. Now we're starting to really talk about personal relationships with people, you know, that people have with one another. Arguments. You know, it's easy to get entrapped in that stuff. It's easy to, it's easy to give yourself over to all of that mess. And, you know, just be in the need of saying, Lord Jesus, cleanse me, wash me in your blood. And praise God that he's willing to do it. And praise God for being in the need. Or having the need, rather. Having the sense of the need. But there's a place to be so filled with his presence. So living in his glory. So gifted. By his, this interaction that he's given to us. I want to read this first scripture to you. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. God says, Christ Jesus, who is God, said, If ye then, be e being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask Him? Amazing, eh? Amazing the goodness of God, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Look quick, 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 quickly. Look with, look, look with me in Acts chapter seven. Ha, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I'm not in Acts chapter seven. Where am I? I'm in Acts chapter two. I can't see the little teeny print. I'm having a, you know, I turned, I didn't, I, for a while I was calling myself 54, and then I was calling myself 56. I'm 55. It's just a denial thing. I, like, how can I be 55 years old? And the little teeny print just starts getting weird. So praise God, I know where I'm at by the passage. So Acts chapter 2 in verse 37. Now when... <clears throat> they heard this. They were pricked in their hearts. Oh, you mean this? Just back up, just a minute. Let me just.
let's just back up for just a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> um, to verse 33. And let's just show you how Paul preached. Therefore, be, and Peter preached, rather. Therefore, being on the right hand of God, having received the Father of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he's poured forth that which you see and hear. Poured forth the gift of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father, okay? For David is not ascended into heaven, but he said himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on your, my right hand until I make your foes, your enemies, your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know as sure, assuredly that God has made this same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Here's what Peter says. Peter says unto them, Repent. And, and he's, telling them, he's telling them, what is he telling them? They're, they're, going, to have, they're going to have to have a complete change. They've got to change religions. They've got to change everything about their belief system. They've got to change everything about the way that they've interacted with God. They gotta, it, it's, once again, a completely total transformation of life and nature because salvation the gift of God is all about being born of the spirit being born again repentance is all about not just saying I'm sorry the gift of repentance is to be made a new creation he says repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost the promise of the Father Luke chapter 24 verse 49 Jesus told them it says go Terry in Jerusalem, till you receive the promise of the Father, who and are endued, empowered with this wonderful gift, this glorious presence of the Holy Ghost. See, this is what we've got to learn. This is what you need to learn. When you begin to sing, when you begin to praise, you've got to hook up with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You just can't go it on your own. When you begin to pray, you got to hook up with the Holy Ghost. Just praying any prayer don't work. You got to learn how to. Just, you got to learn how do you hook up. You only can hook up with this great hunger, with this great reverence, with this great, with this great, wonderful gift of of knowledge, knowing that He's here. See, faith. This wonderful gift of faith. Faith knows that He is, that He exists. He's here. And that he's a rewarder of anyone who seeks him. His manifest presence here, Father. And you, just, you can just begin, once you step in this relationship with the Lord, you can just begin to say, oh Lord, I just, I thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Uh, and and when, this, when, this, uh, when it's a heart that says, I don't want to be absent of your presence. I want your glory right now in my life. I want you right here with me. I don't want to be, in other words, I don't want to be doing anything, oh God, that I couldn't do without you being right here with me. I don't want to go anywhere that you're not going, that I Amen. can't imagine that you're not going to be with me. I don't want to participate with anything. See, that's the, that's the true heart of that's the true heart of service. It's the true heart of worship. It's the true heart of relationship. That begins to arrange things in our life differently. Because when those actions take place, suddenly there is a greater responsiveness that we actually witness and experience and feel. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's true. Not to say that even, even though you've not really grown or matured in this realm, yet that the Lord doesn't hear you when, you when you pray and ask Him in sincerity for the things that you need. Because His ears are open unto who? His ears not open to the sinners? Is there a scripture, is there a scripture that somebody can find a scripture, His ears open to the sinners? He hears the cry. He's made a way in his loving kindness. He's made a cry. He's made a way to where that anyone who cries out to him. He's made a way. It's a day of the Lord, a special time. Where whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be delivered. Where we cry out, Lord, I want change. I want you. I want, I want to be delivered. His eyes are upon the righteous, ears open unto their prayers. But his face is against them that do evil. That's both the Old Testament and the New Testament. But yet, he's poured out his spirit. He's given an opportunity that whosoever in this last day, 
and the pouring out of his grace upon all humanity, anybody, whoever they are, they call upon the name of the Lord, they'll be delivered. They call upon the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close here this morning with this verse of Scripture. I want you to look with me, this verse of Scripture in Titus chapter 3. If it's not underlined in your Bible, I want you to underline it in your Bible. I want you to get it in your spirit that God would have all men to be saved. I want you to get it in your spirit that the long-suffering of God is not willing that any man perish. I want, you to get, I want that to become a part of your life. But you need to also understand that God's not going to justify the wicked. You can't justify them either. Mm -mm -mm. If there's any message that needs to be preached, and if there's any message that needs to be heard, and if there's any message that needs to be lived, it's the message of receive the life of Jesus. It's the abundant life. It's the life full of every good thing. Joy unspeakable and full of glory, peace that passes understanding. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a life that, of every promise of God being yes and amen. Everything he said in the word ultimately being applied in your life and coming to pass as you walk with him, as you follow him. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Paul says, verse, start at verse 4. He says, but after the kindness and love of God our Savior towards men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. I want you to underline that. He saved us because he's going to tell you exactly what it means to be saved. Are you ready? He's going to tell you what it means to be saved. Are you ready? Yes. He saved us by the washing of the water of regeneration. When you go, you get dirty. You go, you take the soap, hop in the shower, and you get cleaned up. But this is a different whole different level of getting cleaned up this is a whole different level of getting washed up this is washed by being born again jesus said you cannot enter into the kingdom of of god unless you've been born again that's what he said he said when you're born again you're born of the spirit he says when you he makes it real he makes it as genuine as the day that you were born of your mother and your father he says that which is born of the flesh is flesh but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He makes it a genuine event of a whole new beginning, a whole new creation. Hallelujah. Something happened to you. That's what's happened to you. It brings a change in every dimension of your life. Change of heart. Change of desire. Change of the things that you want. Change of the, change of the pursuit of, of your life. Now you want to be in that place where he's at, separated from everything that is in the realm called the world. He says, by the washing of the water of regeneration, and he says, and what? And the renewing of the Holy Spirit. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to them who ask? Well, what would you want the Holy Spirit for? To be separate like he's separate. Because that's what it means. That's what holy, that's how you define holy. He's wondrous in holiness. He's glorious in holiness. He's totally severed from everything that is in the world. And, and when he begins to speak out of that realm, it's a whole new manifestation of life. And now, Father has opened up the door of opportunity. He says, I, Jesus says, I'm the door. You want to come to the Father? Where's Father at? He's in a place called the holies of holies. What is that? That's some, that is a realm separated from everything. When the Lord showed it to us in the Old Testament, there was only one person could go in there, and he had to be anointed in a special way by God to be allowed to come in there. He had to receive a special function of grace in his life for that time so that there would be no unholiness in him, so that he would be holiness of holinesses. Kadosh Kodashim, as we say it in the Hebrew language. He had to be absolutely everything that was acceptable unto God, and he still wasn't allowed to look. He wasn't allowed to look. Uh, the seraphim have never sinned. The seraphim are those creation of God, those angels who cry, holy, 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 continually. This whole earth is filled with your glory, with two wings that cover their face. And God told Aaron, he says, no, man, you light this place up with incense, and you make it so thick and let the cloud be so thick, lest you should gaze and see. He allowed one person to see. He gave Moses the honor to behold him, communion with him face to face. Now you and I 
have been privileged by the goodness and the glory of God to behold and to encounter the one who comes in the fullness of everything. The fullness of the Father. The fullness of God's power. The fullness of His glory. So much so that He said, Philip, Have I been so long with you that you've not seen the Father? When you see me, you've seen the Father. Everything about my life is completely filled up with Him. And now, Father says to you and me, should we come into this community of fellowship with Him? Should we come into this realm of enjoying this wonderful love of God? We should also be filled with all of His fullness. He says concerning His church. He says concerning this church. The church is the fullness of him that filleth all things. He calls it, he calls it his holy sanctuary. He calls it his very own body and being. Oh. When all of a sudden, listen to me. When all of a sudden this becomes reality to you, you can step into the faith of it. And when you step into the faith of it, you get the experience of it. Without faith, you can't ever have the experience of it. You hear me? So long as it's aloof, you're not certain, don't understand how that works. So if you just, if you just as, I, as a child, you convert it, become like a little child, and you read what Father says, and he describes these unimaginable, seemingly unattainable, huh, huh, glorious things to us, and we just say, yeah, that's, wow, this is what it is. It's just not a building that's got a real high roof, and door open, and seats, and, you know, and all the configuration, that which you look, it's actually... It's actually a place that Father has set apart, sanctified, consecrated, and called his holy, his holy place. He's made even, he's made even your, your life. He's made our life as the holiest of holies. Father is not going to dwell in the midst of any place, but a place called the holiest of holies, a place consecrated for himself. And Jesus said, if you love me, my Father will come with me, and we'll come, and we'll make our dwelling on the inside of you. <laughs> to think. To think of that goodness of God. To think of that glory of God. To think of that manifestation of who he is. Actually existing right now where you're at. To become more sensitive to it. Cooperative with him. Participative with what he's doing will make the difference as to how much you really come to know and understand the amazing giftings, the amazing blessings, the amazing riches and wealth and prosperity that you have been endowed with. I pray that every one of you will prosper and be in health, but only as your soul prospers. Only as the anointing increases. Only as the manifest presence of God increases in your life. Only as you fully and totally give yourself over to doing it Papa's way. To being taught of God. To being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ in every way. To conforming in every way to those things that God says in his word. I pray that. I pray that as there's an increase. Hallelujah. In your obedience. Huh? As there's an increase in the glory and manifestation of the goodness of God in your life. There'd be also an increase right along with it. Uh-huh. We'll fall right in, right in behind it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are all of these blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. See, the Spirit of the Lord is here. God the Holy Ghost is here to reveal Jesus. Christ Jesus is here right now. To baptize you in his presence. In the presence of the Holy Spirit. And for you to be able to have that. It's because you want to live in the place where he's living. Huh? You want to live a, a life separated unto him. Consecrated unto him. Doing, learning to do it his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just, you know, I'm just really earnest about all of you. Unwrapping your Christmas present here this morning. I just want everybody to, I don't just sit there and stare at it. Why don't you get into it? We're going to go home, and, and little Anna has got multitudes of Christmas presents. And today she gets to open them.
because of the way that things are working out for us, the dynamics of, our, of all that we're doing. And, um, I mean, we expect her to get in there, and I tell you, she's going to do it. She's going to tear it open. She was there, right, she was there last night. She, she was going to start ripping. And we said, no, Anna. And she's like, she wasn't letting go of that present. She just held it, staring at all of us, seeing how serious we are, how committed we are to know. Okay? She was hoping we'd get a little yes out of that. It'll change your heart. Father's, Father's earnest about us opening up our presence. Father's earnest about us beginning to behold and see the magnitude of what he got for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the magnitude. I know you can't see it, but oh, you can feel it. Oh, and the Holy Spirit caused your hands to handle the word of life. John said, our eyes beheld, our hands have handled that eternal life which was with the Father was manifested unto us. And they, they so handled Jesus in such a way that they, he said, and now we reveal him unto you. There is a place, dear people, that you and I can begin to interact with the Lord Jesus now because this opportunity has not passed away. But by the working of the Holy Ghost, we can begin to interact with Jesus, our gift. Did you know that Jesus is your personal gift? Did you know that Jesus is a personal gift from the Father to you? We just, we just try to generalize it, make, make him for the whole world, and he is for the whole world, but how about personalizing it? Jesus is my gift. <laughs> and when I received the gift of salvation, I see the gift of deliverance, he came to me. He came to me and brought it, and, he, and when I received it and accepted it, he came and made his dwelling here in my life. What a gift. And not only to make his dwelling here in my life, but he's come to walk alongside of me. He, you see, wherever I go preaching his word, and you, you can experiment with this too. You go start declaring his word out there to a lost and dying world, and you'll discover that he's with you, confirming his word. He says, Lo, behold, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. You just begin to talk about it. All you got to do is begin to talk about it. You don't have to say, Lord, are you here? Because <laughs> you're not going to find nothing to do with that. Lord, are you here? You, you won't discover him there because that's not a faith realm. That's a doubt realm. But you just begin to move, like he said, and you begin to declare all these words of life, and all of a sudden, you recognize he's there. And now it doesn't, all of a sudden, you're inspired to say something you can't even believe. It just came out of your mouth about how God's going to work a miracle. I've watched that happen over and again so many, many times. Some people have given their life to Jesus as a result of it. Some haven't. We've seen great miracles take place in the street, in the highways, and what we refer as the highways and the byways, just, you know, the... Shopping centers and the sidewalks. I would say it today. We, we just want you to enjoy your gift. And then that was the... That was, can you imagine? He was in the bosom of Father. Father made him his only begotten son. This day have I begotten you. So desiring to set us free. So desiring to take... All the sin and iniquity off of us. Every impurity had to, had to be placed upon him so it could be released from us. Every impurity so that we could become holy. See, purity is a synonym for holiness. And this wife can't be contaminated with anything in the world. That's what he's done. That's who he is. Jesus took all of our impurities, all of our sin, all of our wickedness, all of our trespasses, and Father was willing to allow that to happen. Father was willing to see him as a father. Go through all of that. What a gift from the Father. Where he gave us the very life of Jesus on another level. Huh? The most precious and dear, dearest one to him. I want you to think about this. This is the most costly gift. You can think about it. The Lord saying, look, I want you to bring to me an offering and sacrifice. 
It's just got to be the best. And a lot of folks don't understand this because they've not lived this kind of a life. But when you raise sheep or you raise cows, your best one you want to keep. That's your future. And then he, and then you got you got a, you got a, you got a prize of the lamb, just prize, just beautiful, and you can get attached to lambs. You can get attached. They just they're so helpless. And he says, "I want you to bring that. Come worship me." Yeah, I want you the best one. Why? What would you? Why? Because I'm gonna give my best for you. Abraham, why don't you bring Isaac, the one that you love, the one your soul loves, because I want you to participate in what I'm going to do for you. I want you to be able to feel a little bit more about what I'm going to do for you. Not that I'm trying to put you through hardship. I want you to come to know what I got for you, because unless you're willing to participate with it, it's never going to be meaningful to you. And then the Lord didn't stop there. He's like, what else can I give him? What else is so dear to me, so sacred to me, above all other things? He didn't just go try to find, you know, any gift. Any gift won't do. Any, just any gift won't do. So I said, I don't like Christmas time because it costs me too much. It needs to cost you. And you need to get happy about it costing you. So you can begin to participate with the goodness. Oh, Christmas time, it's merchant. Oh, just, it's been merch, made into merchandise. No, you just stingy. <laughs> well, I don't have any money. Well, you need to believe God to get yourself some money. Huh? Make something. Start on, start January, and you'll get her done by December. I mean, come on, you, know what? you need to participate with it. Ha <laughs> ha. Sending gift isn't merchandising. Giving a gift isn't merchandising. People, you do wrong things. I understand that. But let's do the right thing. Forget about the wrong thing. That's just so much. So what else can I give him? I give him my Holy Spirit. I give him my best. Some men say, we don't want him ruling over us. We don't want him. That's sad. But you and I, we want him. God gave us the most special, the special, the he gave us gifts that, that by and large, most of his people have not even begun to even tap in to the slightest little bit of wealth and riches and provision and ability that's there. And goodness that's there. And life that's there. <laughs> so, we want you to unwrap your gifts. Jesus is yours. Jesus' personal gift to you. He's yours. Holy Spirit's yours. He's yours. He's a personal gift to you. Ha, ha, ha. Your personal gift. For your blessing. For your benefit. For your provision. For every good thing for you. For every perfect thing for you. Not only in this life, but also in the life to come. But he won't work or mix with anything that has to do with your former life and with the things that are in this world because it's all death and grievous to him. He's very tenderhearted. He don't like death. He's very tenderhearted. He don't like, he doesn't, he doesn't like the screaming and the yelling and the fussing and the fighting and the killing and the stealing and all the other abusive things that people do to each other in relationship. He says, come over here. Come live with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which, for those of you who don't know, that means it's a short way of saying praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pratokushi karadaya. Hallelujah. Harabasiki nalalamasatayate. Hallelujah. Ha-ha. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. 
It's the best gift I could have ever imagined. It's, the best gift I could have imagined. it's what I always wanted. It's what I always wanted. <laughs> truly, truly, it's just what I always wanted. <laughs> Lord, you're just what I always wanted. <laughs> Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the, Holy Ghost. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he's, he's, he's more than I could have ever asked for. He's more. He's more. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thank you for revealing the Father. Thank you. For the Father. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you for revealing Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you for revealing the Father. I want to know. I want to know you, Father. I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know you, Holy Spirit. I give my whole life to you. It's not much. But it's all I have. Say, Lord, Lord, I'm not interested in just living with you some of the time. I'm not interested in just being around you some of the time. I want to be with you all the time. I want everything about my life to be filled up with you. I don't want anything else. I don't need anything. Thank you, Father. Thank you. If you've not received the gift of salvation, the gift of deliverance, your heart's not been changed if your spirit's not been changed if you still want the same things that everybody else in this world wants and still desire the same evil things that everybody else in this world desires God wants to change that desire if you're willing he wants to give you a new desire he wants to give you a new heart new spirit he wants to write his word and his laws and his ways upon your heart and your mind so that you'll do them. He wants to change you from the inside out. Jesus is Father's gift to you. All you have to do is accept the gift of life, the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God will work a miracle for you. And a new creation will emerge and you'll become a brand new you. You become a brand new you called a child of God. You become a brand new you born of the Spirit, born of the Holy Ghost. You'll become a holy you. Ha, huh. not a holy Joe, holy you. A whole ha ha ha. Whoo, you'll become a saint. Ha ha ha. You become a saint. In a moment, in an instant. If you want to turn your life over to the Lord Jesus, 
Now's the time to do it. Because today's the, days of sal today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. T tomorrow may be too late. Everybody would just stand with me. Tomorrow may be too late. The Father is calling you. Christ Jesus is calling you. The Holy Spirit is calling you. We're here to pray with you and for you. We'll pray the prayer of faith over your life. As much as when we pray the prayer of faith over people's life, if they're sick, God heals them. We'll pray the prayer of faith over your life, and God will transform you. If you want to be different, if you want to change, today's your opportunity. If you're watching by the web, or you're watching me on YouTube right now, the Lord's made it very, very simple. Christ Jesus made it very simple. He said, whosoever calls upon me. In other words, whoever cries out, help me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Come deliver me, Lord. The Holy Spirit's working with you right now. He's showing you that you're in prison. He's showing you that you're in darkness. He's showing you that you've been deceived. All you got to do is cry out and God will come deliver you. That's all you have to do. Jesus, he's calling. He stands, stands at the door and, of your heart and he knocks. He stands at the door of your life, the door of your affections, the door of your emotions, the door of your existence, everything that you know about yourself. He's, he's pulling on you. He's grabbing a hold of you, doing everything he can possibly do, pleading with you. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, come in. That's all you have to do. How simple can, how simple he's made it. Yes, Lord, come in. Come in and live with me. Come in. Take full control of my life. Come in. <laughs> and make a new creation here. Today. Today is the day. Today, right now. This is the moment. This is the time. This is your, this is your spotlight opportunity in the kingdom of God. Your spotlight opportunity. Heaven stands still waiting for your response. And the Lord says that all the angels in heaven begin to rejoice over one, over one sinner who is converted. One sinner, in other words, who is made a saint by a miracle power of God's grace. Not because you deserved it. Not because you earn it. Not because you somehow ha have done something to bring about the change. But because you just finally threw up your hands and said, okay, God. Come rescue me. I need to be saved. Now I want to, real quickly, I want to deal with the hearts of all those in this place that have called upon the name of the Lord Jesus and you have received the miracle of salvation. And you have been graced with the goodness of God that he's come and made his dwelling in your life. Father's calling you to a place of being consecrated to him. To make up your mind to decide this day. On a whole nother level of commitment. Lord, I'm only living for you. I'm not, I'm not going to any longer be willing to occupy any dimension of my life. Without your manifest presence, without your companionship, without your glory in my life. Now I know that there's many in this place who have already made that decision, but there's some who haven't. And if you haven't, it's time for you to surrender your life to Jesus. It's time for you to surrender your life to the Holy Spirit in a way that perhaps, well, in a way that you have it. In a way that you haven't understood. Probably the best way to put it. And God wants to cause you to understand this day. This is what the Holy Ghost is saying. He's saying, just ask me and I'll fill you. 
Ask me to fill you, and I'll fill you with a consecrated life. Ask me to fill you, and I'll fill you with a separated life. Ask me to fill you, and I'll show you how to live sanctified only unto me here in this place called the Holies of Holies. Living out my life, doing the will of the Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, tonight we're going to partake of those elements that we call communion of the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus. And we want you to come with your heart prepared because it's a very sacred thing to me. And so, understand, the Lord says to us that we can't eat and drink unworthily. You're going to have to be worthy to come eat and drink. And there's only one way to be er worthy, and that's to have a right heart. That's to say, Lord, I'm yours, and I want to live for you, and I want to do anything else but live for you. I want to just do it your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, one of the things about Ruthiana that I just love is she's always bringing people to Jesus. And... Uh, <laughs> and you know and that's one thing about Brittany and I see on summer as well and just watching folks just going and grabbing people and bringing them to Jesus what a life <laughs> what a life Father we thank you for the transformation that's his life that's his life I'll get it right <laughs> Yachi, everything's new. Every, Father's made everything new. He's made it so simple. It's just, how can it be so easy? We just surrender, and he makes everything new. Father, we thank you for this new heart, this new spirit. <laughs> and I ask you, Lord, fill. Yachi. <laughs> Did I say it right that time? Did I get it right? Fill her with your glory. Fill her. Right now, Holy Spirit, overwhelm her. Lord Jesus, baptize her right now. Let the goodness and let the glory of your manifest goodness, your manifest power and presence, so take over her life. It should be kept by you from this day, throughout every day, for the rest of eternity. Lord, we thank you that you took her name and you wrote it down in your book of life. Ha! Huh. That you've washed her in your precious blood, Lord Jesus. That you've cleansed her from every sin. Just say that with me. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That you've washed me. That you washed me. With a special kind of detergent. With a special kind of detergent. With a special kind of cleansing power. Your own blood, your own life. Your own blood, your own life. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. That we've been washed. That we've been washed. In your blood. In your blood. That we've been born. That we've been born. Of your spirit. Of your spirit. That you gave us. That you gave us. A new heart. A new heart. And a new spirit. And a new spirit. And you put your Holy Spirit. And you put your Holy Spirit. On the inside of us. To teach us holiness. To teach us your ways. To live a different kind of life. Than everybody in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Kala namonje. Just keeps getting better. Just keep every day with Jesus. It's better. More glorious. Father, thank you for the anointing right here. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Just so filled up with every good thing of heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. Praise us, Hola Mosatea, Mongolia. You know, we just so earnest 
to get everybody over in this realm of divine glory. We don't want anybody left out. That's why we lay hands on people. That's why we plead with people. That's why we do what we do. We want everybody to understand this wonderful gift of life that's been given and enjoy it. It's an abundant life. It has the issues of heaven pouring out of our lives, out of our emotions, uh, out of our passions. Mm -mm. But praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the wonderful working power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, there's a couple of things I wanted you to do. I want, number one, I, I want you to honor the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings because it's a, Father's going to work a miracle through it for you. That's what He's promised. That's the way He works a miracle. You give Him something and He multiplies it. Smallest acts of obedience result in the greatest miracles of faith. But listen to this. I want you to let the Lord lay someone who's uh, on your heart, who's, who, they're, they're poor, and, you know, just pray about it, and, 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 and the Lord will lead you, and make sure that the, the kids in that house have Christmas presents. If every one, if every person, if every individual would find someone to bless that's poor, poor family, just about everybody around would have, be blessed, you know. And I, well, let me just tell you what I do. I do it, I do it anonymously. And I, I go to the parents, and I just tell them, look, the Lord's laid this on my heart to do this for you, for your kids. And I'm just, I'm giving this to you on behalf of the Lord. And then they can give it to their children. So it's from them, you see. And then it just remains completely confidential. And, and their kids are blessed. But their, their kids, then the parents watch their kids being blessed, you know. And um, all, the all, all that God the Holy Ghost does through that is just constantly remind them of how Father wants to bless them. And when people begin to get in a state of heart and attitude that Father wants to bless them, I'm telling you right now, things are going to change in their lives. When you begin to live every day knowing, wow, Father wants to bless me. <laughs> it opens up the door for a faith realm. <laughs> Who? Hallelujah. Takaro no kia sataya. Balasia tatere. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll worship the Lord with you giving and find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in the name of Jesus. Get you, prepare your hearts for tonight. Just prepare your heart for tonight. Tu togo nishi, tai, ibre nasi tore.